Maybe we need to introduce the market you operate in, because for some people, you know, what's the difference between tanker, product tankers, and yeah. how would you introduce the market? It's quite easy, but for people who are not into it, maybe they need the ABC on. What market are we talking about here? Because like you yeah. said, it's volatile, unique, global. So what is like the frame you use to explain it? So normally what I would say is that if you think about what we do, which is product tankers, that means we're basically transporting gasoline, diesel oil, you know, jet fuel, the, the, the stuff that comes out of a refinery. So the way you want to think about the tanker business in general is that if you take Frontline, for instance, they will be supplying crude oil that comes out of the ground from where it comes up to the refinery. So that's a slightly more stable business in the sense that that oil doesn't really go different places, right? You kind of know where oil comes out into a refinery. We take the things that come out of the refinery afterwards. So that's more clean because, you know, the darkest product that we carry is like, you know, it's kind of, you know, yellowish, I would say, and the same consistency as, as a kind of a, a soda, basically. So it's not sticky. It's not, it's not like crude, dark oil. It's a clean part. All of these products, contrary to the crude oil coming into the refinery, have the whole world as a consumption area. So the way you want to think about our market is that Everywhere in the world, someone uses gasoline, diesel, or jet fuel. So our ships go everywhere, which is why it's important to have scale, so you can cover the entire world. Um, the cargoes on board our ships gets traded multiple times while they're on board the vessel. So we never know where they're going. So a vessel coming out of, say, the Arabian Gulf could go to Japan, could go to New York, could go to Rotterdam, could go to West Africa. So you need to think about, you take that and then you multiply it by 220 ships. And you can see how the optionality in our world is every day, we are trying to optimize in this universe of vessels and cargoes traveling around, trying to get a better performance than our competitors and others. Yeah. So it's a very much of a, a volatile trading world that we're part of. So for people who are you know, retail investors looking at this, what is the correlation or the causality between crude and product clean? Is yeah. there anything that is like set in stone, the patterns, or not really? No, I mean, I think it's, it's a really good question, actually, because it's probably also one of the misunderstandings, I think, in the market that people feel, well, let's just watch the crude market and then we know what's going to happen in products. That's not the case. Is there a correlation? Well, to some extent, there is over time, because obviously, you need to put oil into a refinery to get something out of the refinery. So there is some correlation, but the biggest difference I think is uh, when you compare the two is that if markets are really bad for crude oil ships, it's very difficult to do something else, right? You load the cargo from A, you technically go to B. You can't really do too much. If the market is bad in products, remembering that we have voyages all around the world, you can actually make a difference if you have a good operation. So you can start sending ships to certain areas where you think, you know, there might be some export coming out of this area. So it makes better sense to go down here than going there. So the thinking process of where you put your ships can maybe turn a bad market into a bad market plus 20%. Yeah. That, that's, I would say, is the biggest difference. Yeah. But, but like you said, you described all the vessels and then you have the optionality. So if you're going to be able to put this in an Excel sheet or whatever, how do you tackle it? Do you think it's, uh, do you get the Pareto principle that 20% of the news gives you 80% of the answer? So whether it's China, Gulf, or how do you yeah. tackle that news flow and to be able to order, no, to be able to truly understand the market dynamics? Yeah. Because many people, I guess, are trying to do yeah. that every day. Yeah. So how do they go about it? Well, I think it's a combination, right? And someone asked me the other day, so is a high oil price good or bad for your market, for instance, right? I said, well, you know, I need to go deeper to explain that. And I think, you know, news like oil price and others have an effect, but it's the combination of them. So, for instance, a higher oil price means that we are paying more for the fuel that we use to get the ship sailing. Uh, is, the high, is the high oil price driven by lack of supply or is it driven by demand going up? Right? So there are two different things in it. So when we analyze our markets, it, it's really about um, understanding the, 
dynamics on what creates trading. So I'll give you an example, refinery margins. One important thing to monitor, right? Because if the refineries make a lot of money by refining crude oil into products, they will increase production. That means more comes out. For us, it's not so much the absolute demand of diesel or gasoline that's important. It's actually more important that they travel longer distances. And that's trading, right? Someone buys gasoline out of the Middle East, where can I sell it at the highest price? To understand that dynamic, you know, where are the, the new demand areas? That's important. Um, but if I can just add one thing to this, um, if anyone looks at our market and they look, look back at 35 years, there is one pattern that if, if there's one takeaway I'd like people to look at, it's we have never had a demand problem ever in all these years. Yes, we had a blip after the financial crisis. We had a, a blip again after the uh, in Corona, but it quickly came back. Oil demand has gone up and will continue to be strong for the next five years at least. Every time our market has been bad, it's when we have ordered too many ships. It's been supply driven. And the difference where we are now compared to all the other uh, downsides is that you can't order ships until 2026, 2027. And the order book is so low compared to all the old ships coming off. So all investors should look at one thing, supply. Yeah. If supply for one reason should go through the roof, then you know that sometime out there, uh, the market will change. In our view now, you're looking at five, 10 years out where it's impossible. Even if we took all the yard capacity in the world, we can't cover the shortfall of ships that are getting too old and now being scrapped.